Gun owners gathered in Washington April 19th on the 15th anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing, also the anniversary of the end of the Waco siege, and before that, the first shots fired in the Revolutionary War. The gun owners rally came at a time that a new study from polls suggests that Americans are more discouraged, even angry, with their government than they've been in years. Ironically, the Pew study came out just as government, it seems to me, did something right with the Securities and Exchange Commission filing fraud charges against some of the biggest bankers in the land. So just what's fueling the anger? It would be hard to deny that media play a part in it. And guess what? There's a new right-wing television network set to launch this summer. Just what we need. In a land where state spending has increased more than $500 million since 2003. Governor, we Republicans have created... A monster! South Dakota must call on one man to make it right. Scott Heideprim. For years, I've tried to cut government spending, end no-bid contracts, and stop fooling the public with accounting tricks. That's the only way to get spending under control without raising taxes. Scott Heideprim is the independent Democrat for governor. Well, with me to kick off today's conversation, Farai Chidea, a multimedia journalist, entrepreneur, media critic. Welcome to the program, Farai. It's always great to see you. So Laura. this April 19th, how are you feeling? We're talking as these rallies are about to happen, this uh, high rate of anger in the air, and now a right-wing network, a new one? In the yeah. offering? You know, I mean, I really, I have not been to any of the Tea Party rallies. Um, you know, New York City, not such a big epicenter. But I really want to go. I spent some time years ago reporting on white supremacists and, you know, like people who were clans people, Aryan nation, but then also people who were in um, areas where there was a lot of institutional racism and, and covered this uh, case of a a black baby that they wanted to dig up out of a white church cemetery. I think that we have to embrace the fact that America is still going through a racial crisis and the also the political crisis, the right wing crisis, you know, President Clinton speaking out about how rhetoric shapes belief. I think finally we're at least getting it. Mm. I, you know, I there was a long period of denial. I think finally we're at least getting as right, a nation Rich, that we have the, to deal with this. Columnist for the New York Times called it a neo-Confederate rebellion. You think that's a good phrase? Yeah, I think it's a great phrase. I mean, you know, the, there. I mean, I grew up on the Mason-Dixon line in in Baltimore, Maryland, and Virginia was the seat of the Confederacy, and it's also one of these places where there has been a long tradition of, um, you know, just out, outrageous acts like shutting down the school system instead of integrating it. Um, I think that, and, and there was that recent uh, kerfuffle over having April be Confederacy Month in Virginia. in Virginia. And so we are still, we're still going through this huge emotional battle over who owns the soul of America. And what did you make of this Pew study showing that uh, disproportionately Tea Party member, uh, members or people that identify themselves as Tea Party supporters believe that this government does, doesn't represent them or disproportionately favors African Americans and poor people? Well, you know, I was just at this uh, event called the Black Policy Conference at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. And what was really interesting was that William Julius Wilson and the sociologist said um, that one of the things that happened was that for the first time in well over a decade, there was less than a two to one ratio of black unemployment to white unemployment. So even though the black unemployment rate is disastrous, whites are actually experiencing a sort of greater increase in the rate of unemployment. And I think they, you know, I think there's a profound, um, you know, unease with this idea of somehow falling proportionately behind in in the race race mm -hmm. there's like there's so many studies that show that people view things proportionately it's not how much money you have it's how much money you have compared to your neighbors and i think in this case we're seeing privilege it's not how much privilege white americans have in every case it's how much privilege they may have in in proportion to african americans and latinos and that that slipping makes people feel, some people feel unsettled. Mark Lloyd was one of the people at that conference with you, I believe, this last yeah. weekend. Did he talk at all about having essentially become a target himself of right-wing attacks? No, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Um, but I think that, I think that many people were trying to figure out how to speak around these issues, knowing that, 
you will get attacked. And, and it, it, one thing that came up at the conference was being videotaped. A lot of people, it was being videotaped. A lot of people didn't want to be videotaped. Well, there's a real fear. I mean, I was on Bill Maher show last week and talked about this sort of post-apartheid American racial resentment, simply to say we need to come to grips with this. Yeah. Um, my email box, let's just say, was not filled with love from people who ha had tuned into that program and heard that comment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes when I go on cable networks, I'll get random racist hate mail, but it's it's just part of the game and I think that I think that one thing that we have to do is have a sense of humor about it. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, we would just go out and explore America and meet racists all the time, like go camping and uh, at the campsite. Some people, there would be some like mini racial incident. And you know, I think that people who are people of color or people who want to see an integrated America, you just have to have a sense of humor. Well, a sense of humor and means of communication. I mean, quickly there was another report from the American Society of Newspaper Editors about the decline of, um, uh, well, particularly African American journalists. There's also the prospect of this new right-wing network. It's probably not going to be the most diverse place in the world. You'd be surprised. How are new media faring when it comes to diversity, and have they got muscle against this? Oh, new media is a disaster. A lot <laughs> of people are using technology as an excuse to say we don't have to hire people of color because we need techies, as if somehow there are no blacks, Latinos, it's certainly Asian Americans who know how to use technology. So I've, you know, at, at one point, um, AOL was launching a new news product sphere and they had an all white startup team. I was like, the news of a new America is all white. And I think technology can be used as an excuse to you know, say, okay, we're, we don't have to deal with diversity. And we've seen an erosion in all forms, television, radio, and um, you know, uh, print. But I think online, there aren't even good numbers. But the trends in terms of looking at what big companies are doing um, for profit and nonprofit is not good. But you make a good point that you can sometimes see window dressing, as we saw at the Republican Leadership Conference in New Orleans, people of color on the stage, but not in the crowd. Yeah, I think that this new right wing network, I mean, I, I suspect that there will be some black or Latino hosts precisely for that reason. For I Chidea, I wish you luck. I hope that we can develop this muscle, maybe together. For I Chidea, you can find out more through the links at our website, grittv.org. We've got more on this conversation coming up.